I'd like to call to order the uh, Tuesday, September 20th, 2016 Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors meeting. Certif certification of compliance with the open meeting law? As posted September 16th at 2 p.m. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jim. Jim. Thank you. Roll call. Who's that official uh, here? No, that's 23. No. No. <laughs> Push your 10 button. Okay. Jim, push your 10 button. 10 button. No. This is a We're off to a good start here. All right. <laughs> You're good. Okay. He's going to touch it again. <laughs> All right. 23 supervisors present. Thank you. <coughs> Approval of the August 16th, 2016 journal. Supervisor Winkle. Move to approve as published. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Supervisor Epping. I'd like to support that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Epping. Winkle, Any questions or discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please vote aye. That motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Consideration of appointments by chairperson. To the airport advisory committee, Richard Bemis and Jack Van Dixhorn. Supervisor Winkle. Motion approved. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. You. Supervisor Testrudi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll support the motion. Thank you, Supervisor Testrudi. Any discussion? Supervisor Glavin. Uh, I don't believe uh, Supervisor Van Dixhorn was a member previously. So this is a, an appointment, not a reappointment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I assume that is correct, Jack? This is, I guess. I you're guess. not a reappointment? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I asked. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. we'll correct that. Here. Yeah. Any other discussion? Okay, let's all vote either aye or nay. Uh, motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Con consideration of appointment by county administrator. Again, to the airport advisory committee, Stephen Bauer. I believe, Steve, this is a reappointment. Is that correct? Thank you. Supervisor Uraner. I support that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Uraner. Supervisor Glavin. I'll second that, and Steve was a member <laughs> previously. Way to keep us on our toes. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor, vote aye. Those opposed, nay. That motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Presentations. Ryan O'Rourke, our court commissioner, is going to give us an overview.
I have any material. So Adam asked me to give a brief presentation. It's just an overview of what our office actually does here for the county. Uh, we're really a dual role office here in Sheboygan County with the court commissioner's office. We have the normal uh, statutory duties of a court commissioner, but we are also what's called a family court services office. We carry both functions here. Our number is established by you. In other words, the number of court commissioners in the county here is myself and an assistant. The authority that we have is set by Wisconsin statute, although that authority can be specifically limited by the judges as to what types of hearings we can do. In Sheboygan County here, the commissioner's office has all the powers allowed by the Wisconsin statutes. This is really the meat of what we do is the various hearing types that we have down in B10 in the basement of the courthouse. Uh, it starts with a lot of uh, responsibility in family court proceedings. Uh, we do final hearings and divorces when everything is agreed upon and stipulated to by the parties. Uh, if there's any issue of a disagreement, it goes before the circuit court judges. We also spend a lot of time on temporary orders in divorce cases and legal separations while the case is still pending. Whether people need orders for child support, placement, visitation, who gets what car, who gets the house, things of that nature. Uh, we issue those temporary orders uh, while the case is pending before the divorce is final. We also issue temporary restraining orders and hold the final <coughs> hearings for domestic abuse injunctions uh, and harassment injunctions where someone is seeking the protection of a court order against another party uh, in situations of either domestic abuse or harassment, obviously. Uh, we do probable cause hearings for Chapter 51, 54, and 55 cases. Those are hearings at the hospital at uh, Sheboygan Memorial every morning, and what those really are are uh, mental health uh, commitments, uh, seeking treatment for those who are mentally ill, uh, treatable and dangerous to themselves or others when they otherwise would not be willing to seek treatment voluntarily, uh, and alcohol commitments uh, for uh, people who need protection due to uh, serious issues with the consumption of alcohol. Chapter 54 and 55 is uh, talking about temporary guardianships and emergency protective placements uh, for people who need help with having a decision maker or a living arrangement that keeps them safe. Often we're talking about uh, people with dementia, Alzheimer's, or related uh, medical issues. Every day at 11 o'clock we do initial appearances and bail hearings. Uh, in criminal cases for people who are held in custody. Uh, we also do every Wednesday initial appearances for simple traffic and forfeiture citations. We do plea hearings every Tuesday on juvenile delinquency and child in need of protection and services cases uh, brought by the county. Uh, we do paternity hearings for children who are not, uh, well paternity hearings occur when the child is not the product of a marriage or the father did not voluntarily acknowledge at the birth of the child. Those hearings are much like temporary orders. We're establishing uh, who has decision-making authority for the child, where the child's placed, how visitation works, uh, child support if necessary, uh, and small details such as who gets to claim the tax exemption, things like that. We do supplemental hearings, which are debtor-creditor hearings, uh, where a uh, person who owes money is brought before the court to answer financial questions uh, by the person with the claim to determine whether they should pay. A little more lighthearted subject, we do weddings uh, every Friday uh, at 3 o'clock and those vary in their uh, degree of um, pomp and circumstance. <laughs> sometimes we have a full courtroom, sometimes it's just a couple people who want to formalize a wedding from out of the country get all shapes and forms there. And then uh, my assistant, Susan, does every small claims case in Sheboygan County, including uh, mediation with respect to those all the way through trial. Every order we issue, uh, either Susan or I, is subject to a de novo review. De novo is Latin for the new. Uh, and that's essentially a new hearing at the request of any party before the judge. It's a decent judge of how we're doing downstairs. We don't get a ton of feedback. 
uh, except when the judges get a lot of de novo hearings and then we hear about it. That's about the only uh, source of uh, grading we get. We're kind of isolated downstairs. The family court services that I was talking about earlier is really twofold. First, we're talking about mediation services, and second, there's a parent education component to it. Mediation is a program for a family court designed to help parties reach agreement that's acceptable to both of them on issues of child custody and placement. This is useful for several reasons. It teaches parents to work together to find common ground, uh, which can be beneficial uh, for any number of reasons uh, in uh, trying to parent together. And it avoids litigation and tying up the court. Uh, we con we, what we actually do is we don't do the mediation ourselves. We contract with private mediators, uh, refer the cases when we receive an order from the court or a request for mediation, and then we track and report the results of the mediation to the court. I always tell people in family cases to take every advantage of mediation they can because uh, it's really the last step of the proceedings where they're going to have any control over the issue. Otherwise, the decision is going to be made for them, either by me or a circuit court judge. So this is certainly a preferable route if they can reach an agreement. Uh, the second component of that family court services is parent education. This is mainly through the Remember the Children class. Again, we don't actually teach the class. We contract out for it with some educational providers. Uh, it's really a couple of local counselors uh, in the area. We can coordinate the scheduling and tracking of attendance in the class and provide input uh, with respect to the curriculum that's taught. What it really is is for parents going through the divorce without minor children to teach them uh, how to effectively co-parent and mitigate the effects of divorce upon the children so that uh, hopefully it can be as healthy a process as possible. Finally, my favorite responsibility is being on call 24-7 to review and authorize search warrants for the district attorney's office and law enforcement. Um, it's exactly what it sounds like. You know, if they need blood drawn at 3 in the morning, they're not going to go their way, so someone's got to be on call, uh, and that happens to be me. It's actually one of the more interesting parts of my job because uh, you get some pretty good stories. And that sums up uh, our responsibilities as quickly as I can manage it and still cover everything and to be one of the questions. No questions, but why don't you just take a minute to share a little bit about your background. I sure. Most board members know who you are, but I'm sure there's some wondering who is this new department. Sure. I've been the court commissioner for probably just over a year now. Uh, I started schooling. I'm, I grew up in Janesville. I went to Platteville uh, for my undergrad <laughs> after the Bull Ryan years. I was there. And uh, then went to Wisconsin for law school because I didn't want to actually have a real job yet. <laughs> After that, I worked as an assistant district attorney for several years, a few of them in Sheboygan here for Joe. Uh, and then I went to Manitowoc and worked in the Corporation Counsel's Office mainly as a child protection attorney uh, for about eight years. That was probably, not probably, that was the most rewarding job I've ever had. Uh, but it was also challenging and difficult at times. Uh, then I came back here and was lucky enough to sign it for Rebecca's departure and land in the job I always wanted. So that, that pretty much sums it up. I uh, have a wife and two little daughters. Anything else? Yeah, no? Thank you, Ryan. Public addresses. Uh, we have Alan Knoll. He's going to give an update on the Veterans Memorial. First off, I'd like to thank this board for approving the budget again for uh, grave flags. It means a lot to the families to see their members recognize that they were veterans in our armed forces. Every once in a while I get a call that somebody's missing a flag and we don't know why it disappears but it does, but it does mean a lot to the families. So again, thank you for setting that budget and letting the service office here in Schwinn County get the flags. And I've kind of warned you once before 
that budget's got to grow a little bit because every year the number of flags we need keeps growing. So again, all right. Next thing is on your desk, you should see a little flyer there. Sheboygan uh, County Veterans Memorial is celebrating a dedication of names of veterans that have asked to have their names placed on the monument this year. We have 57 veterans here in Sheboygan County that are requesting their names. Uh, you are all invited to come out that day to that uh, service uh, dedication. Uh, it'd be great. You can meet the veterans that are going to be in attendance and their fam fa fa families. They would appreciate it. Also on that flyer, flyer you notice we are dedicating the first Gold Star family plaque. Now, I'll explain that to you. If you see a Blue Star banner hanging on someone's house, that means they have a member of the family serving in the armed forces. If you see a Gold Star there, that means a family member has become a casualty during a conflict someplace. So the Gold Star signifies we're honoring those that have fallen. Our committee has gotten together and we've mailed out 270 invitations to families throughout the state of Wisconsin that have lost a family member since 9-11 to 2001. So we're expecting a good group of people there. Another side story too is and it's sad. Almost 30% of those 270 are suicide victims after they come back. These soldiers are coming back under duress. It, it's just the way the service is over there. So again, I'm just trying to give you uh, board members a heads up. You know, I don't know how it works in the budget, budget system here, but you know, our mental health system here in the county is put under strains and that's probably some of it, okay? So you understand that these veterans come back under d d distress. I also like to make you aware and uh, your, your cooperation is when we have Youth Government Day here, I, you know, I, I understand the business and we have your department heads like John and uh, the other ones from the Treasury Department, the Sheriff Department, so forth. They dedicate that whole day to educate the youth of this fine city and county of what county government is. And I'll say this, and Adam, I think, can proclaim to it, probably about 90% go home with a whole different perspective of what really happens here in Sheboygan County. What happens here in this room, we actually partake of what the county board meeting uh, kind of happens. We, we do a little role playing. So, last thing is, uh, in two years, our Veterans Memorial will be celebrating 25 years of existence. Yes, we are going to have a celebration. How big, we don't know, but we're, we're planning now already. So uh, just to keep your ears up, we will have something there. I can guarantee you right now that American Huey helicopter will be back. For those of you that did not get the opportunity to take a ride on it, that opportunity will be coming back. It's, it's, it's quite an experience. That's pretty much ends my report. Is there any questions? Thank you for your time. Thank you, Alan, and thank you for your service. Letters, communications, and announcements. Uh, first off, I have a letter that all of you have a copy of on your desk from Ron Ertl regarding road construction concerns. We'll receive that for information. Next, I have a request from Wisconsin Healthy Workplace Advocates regarding Freedom from Workplace Bullies Week. We'll refer that to the Health and Human Services Committee. And finally, I have a resolution from the Richland County Board of Supervisors opposing the UW Extension Reorganization Plan. We've had that numerous times. We'll, re we'll receive that for information. Thank you. That's all. County Administrator's Report. Adam? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. I'd like to start by recognizing Mr. Alan Noel. Each year he comes here and provides a brief update and his service not only in the armed forces, but in the community with the Legionnaires, the, uh, when we have the students here, the good work on uh, running the Memorial Committee. Alan, you just continue to lead, and we appreciate it. Thank you. 
I also was pleased that Ryan O'Rourke could join us tonight, one of our 19 department heads. As you know, uh, the chair and I for a number of years going back to, boy, when did we start TV8 programs? Who was Dan Lemieux, I think, going back now 18 years to, to uh, Mr. Dan Lemieux. We've been having a monthly TV8 program, and every month we generally focus on a different department and the department heads there. And each time that happens, I just, I take pride in the work that these department heads do. Uh, many of you, I'm sure, probably don't know Ryan very well in the Family Court Commissioner's Office, but he's doing some very important, challenging work and uh, last, no, this month, a little earlier this month, uh, Chairman Wagner and I interviewed uh, Mr. Joe DiCecco, who, as you know, will be retiring the end of this year. And um, Joe, I thought, provided an excellent overview of the very challenging work that the District Attorney's Office does, that his staff do. Uh, there's just so many good things going on in this organization. And that's the first thing I want to touch on with the budget development process. It's always Groundhog Day. The, the budget development process ends the first week in November and pretty much gets rolling again in February when we start looking at our budget assu assumptions. Uh, the executive committee is very closely involved. Folks like uh, Finance Committee Chair Greg Wegeman and that committee obviously has a strong leadership role. They're involved with the final heavy lifting now, meeting with the department heads, but I think uh, Supervisor Wegeman would agree that our department heads have come in well prepared. Uh, we're on point to achieve the goal that the county board has established of providing a modest property tax reduction. You have a very high-end summary at your table. And um, Wendy, who I've not acknowledged in the past as our finance director, I don't know if we can call her new anymore. She's got a year under her belt now. But she has just done a ter terrific job helping coordinate the process. We are still on point to provide a modest property tax levy reduction of just over 1% and a tax rate reduction of just over 2%. And again, you have the summary in front of you. We, uh, when we developed this budget with the very minimal resources that we have, really our predominant focus is on maintaining essential programs and services. Obviously, we want to maintain our law enforcement our good people at the Health and Human Services Department, good work that's happening at our five-star facility at Rocky Knoll. All 19 departments are providing vital community assistance and support. We're, we're looking to maintain, we're not really growing. In fact, over the years, as you know, we've gotten smaller and we've established priorities and, and our personnel costs are less today than they were over a decade ago. I mean, we've really streamlined. But we're trying to maintain essential programs and services. This budget does that, but it also, as every budget does, has some new initiatives. You just heard Mr. Knoll talk about the needs of our veterans. And nationally, you're hearing more about that. Our veteran service office does some tremendous work along with the Legionnaires and the organizations involved with supporting our veterans countywide. But about three, four years ago, this board supported the establishment of a veterans court. That's been running, has peers involved, helping people get back on their feet and getting the support they need. And I'm very pleased that this year and moving into next, uh, Tom Agerbrecht and a number of folks here have been working on a drug court, and that's one of the resolutions you'll be acting on tonight. We're going to be, in fact, we've essentially created it, though it's, it's still getting ramped up, but this drug treatment court is a tremendous example of responding to the need. Heroin abuse, opiate abuse, our detention center, seeing more and more people in it that need help and aren't getting it there. Uh, some counties have already done this with tremendous success. I know Chairman Wagner is very proud and supportive of the efforts that Tom Agerbrecht and Joe DiGiacco and our judges and our law enforcement <coughs> officials, our private counselors, I mean it's been a tremendous collaboration. So I see Tom with us this evening. I want to thank and acknowledge his leadership. I know Joe DiGiacco wanted to be here tonight because he was part of uh, crafting this resolution, working with the Law Committee. I want to thank Chairman Koch and the members of the Law Committee for their support of this initiative. This is an important initiative and it's not new money. It's reprioritizing dollars, resources that we already have.
Again, a credit to all the people involved. The budget only has two outstanding or initiatives that are outside of the existing resources. One for the clerk of courts and one for the district attorney. And the finance committee had a significant presentation by Joe DiCecco and his team last week about how we improve getting children in the hands of new parents or guardians to make sure that they have a stable home. It's really kind of gut-wrenching when you get into it and you see that some of these children have been through the process or still don't have a, a true place to call home or someone as a parent or guardian for two, three years. And to the credit of the district attorney's office, the finance committee, those involved were looking to improve that area as well. Another new initiative, and then the final one I'll just share as an example, and uh, Aaron Brault's here this evening, and I've acknowledged him before, uh, the work that we did here on Penn Avenue and uh, acquiring those three homes that if you've, if you've looked, these homes are not the best use for our community, and we can very much enhance the economic development opportunity here, and, and Aaron and Carl Bising and others have delivered. So the budget process is going well. Our departments are working effectively together. You are poised to achieve the goal that you've established, not only at the County Board Leadership Forum, but as part of the transportation proposal to deliver some property tax relief, as well as, and I see Greg Wegeman here this evening, uh, Greg Schnell here this evening, as well as put some resources into our transportation system rather than kick the can down the road and consolidate three facilities into one. So I'll turn to that as the third area that I wanted to briefly touch on. Also you have tonight the five-year capital plan. This is heavy lifting. There are a number of new initiatives in this five-year capital plan, as there always are. And some are very practical. We've got to take care of our roofs. We've got to take care of our roads. We need certain equipment. Very practical. Others are new initiatives that are going to provide enhancements, efficiencies, and frankly are an investment in our community. And as you look at this five-year capital plan that has now been unanimously approved by the Finance Committee, the Executive Committee, a lot of work has gone into this already. The transportation complex is obviously the major cost and initiative. And again, to refresh everyone's memory, the transportation proposal was about maintaining our roads and infrastructure, our roads and bridges, being fiscally conservative, taking responsibility for our transportation network. The transportation complex is consolidating three facilities into one. Two of the three facilities are very dated, has been carefully vetted, We've been challenged, and we did include that in the transportation proposal. We're not going to bond any more than $15 million for that, and we've stuck to that. In fact, some folks have asked, well, if it's a $23, $24 million facility, how is it that we're going to be able to get by with bonding $15 million, which is the plan, rather than the full amount? And the answer is, because as you just learned from our audit, we have a healthy fund balance. We have a healthy organization. We're going to be able to utilize some fund balance going forward. And we're going to be selling, we've already sold, the Elkhart Lake Shed. We're going to be selling the, selling the Plymouth Shed. We're going to be selling the old highway headquarters in downtown Sheboygan here. When you garner the sale proceeds, fund balance proceeds, we're poised to cover the difference. So and we're in good shape. And again, I want to acknowledge Greg Schnell, the Transportation Committee, the Finance Committee, and the Executive Committee for their work on this. This is a major initiative and a tremendous investment in our community that should serve us for the next 75 or more years. Finally, costs. Did you know that in 2005, oil, Oil, is a ton, a ton of oil, Greg? Per ton, thank you. A ton of oil in 2005 cost $211.12. 211, 211 $211.12. 2005. 
2005 doesn't seem that long ago, does it? But it's been 10 years now. In 2015, that same ton of oil, and oil as we all I think know is a main ingredient to building and maintaining our road infrastructure, that same ton of oil is $534. It's gone up well over 100%. We've gone from 211 to 534. That's in 10 years. 2016, we are seeing a little bit of relief with that as costs have gone down. How many of you think the costs are gonna stay where they're at today? So we know we had a real challenge. The state obviously continues to grapple with this challenge, but that's just one example. Cost to do a mile of overlay, which involves more than just oil, we know that in 2005 we could do it for under 60,000. Today it costs us a little over 120,000. We have state imposed caps in place, We're trying to maintain essential programs and services. How do you deal with those kinds of increases? Locally, we had the strength, the leadership, to step up and do something about it. I'm proud of that. I'm proud of this team. On a statewide level, they're still grappling with it. Highway 23. Who in this community do you know doesn't think Highway 23 is dangerous? Or doesn't believe that we need to do something to improve that for the economic well-being and safety of our community? It's, if I've heard one consistent message about Highway 23, at least from our community, it's something's got to happen here. In 1999, when the project was enumerated, the cost of the project was estimated to be $42 million. What do you think it costs today? $146 million. $42 million to $146 million. Is that fiscally conservative? Is that leadership? We gotta get this done. On September 29th, Chairman Wagner is hosting and Supervisor Bill Gehring is hosting and we have some other local government officials joining us, a Just Fix It forum to talk about what's happened with costs, to talk about needs, and again, as Greg and I are working together on some of the materials and obviously Bill Gehring and Tom are are beefing up for this, you know, there's a part of us feeling, geez, we just, for the last six, eight months, worked so hard on developing something to address our local transportation needs, at least improve the problem. It doesn't solve it, but it certainly improves it. But we've got to raise awareness to these state projects. I think Tom just said to me before the meeting, you may use a county road from Sargento to get to the interstate, or Highway 23, but then what? And all the other businesses that relied on our on our highways and interstate systems. Something has to give here. The governor uh, last week shared the governor's proposed budget and as you may be aware, and I'm sure the vast majority of you are, it's, it's essentially holding the line on the overall cost. And we all would love to hold the line on the overall cost. I know that sounds good, but Highway 23, as part of the proposal, is to delay it another three years. So, we've gone from 42 million to 146 million. What's gonna cost three years from now? So with that, I hope you will join us on September 29th. And obviously, we have a statewide challenge that collectively we need to weigh in and help raise awareness to our constituents and others, continue to talk about this, and in time, as always, I hope cooler has prevailed and we solve or address the problem. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Adam. Supervisor Urena. Thank you, Chairman Wigner. I just have a very brief question on the on the handout. Is the two, 2016 uh, information is that budget or actual? I didn't see this on the agenda, so I wasn't prepared. But on the handout that we have for. Uh, the tax, proposed 2017 tax, 
there's a 2016 column, it's not labeled. Is that actual or budget? You're referring to the one page high end yes. summary? Okay. Yes. Yes. As you can see at the top, it says Sheboygan County budget development. We're in the process. Proposed 2017 levy targets. Sure. And then at the bottom, it shows the 2016 column and the 2017 column and the difference. So my question is, is the 2016 column budget or actual, Adam? Is it budget numbers, the 2000? Budget. Okay. And do we know what what were the percentage change between our actual 16 to 17 is? Do I have that oh, off I, the top of my memory? I didn't, no. I didn't know this was going to be a no. part of the presentation. But feel free to follow up and we can get that for you. Thank you. I'd yep. appreciate that. Okay, consideration of committee reports, executive committee. Resolution number 15. Regarding 2017 five year capital plan, committee recommendation amend per the committee report and adopt as amended. We need a motion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Supervisor Wagman. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will move that we adopt resolution number 15. Thank you. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Koch, did you just want to help me out there with a motion? <laughs> All right, thank you. Any questions or discussion? Supervisor Uraner. So I do, have, I do have some questions since we're approving this capital plan unless we can move it out into our, our next um, our next meeting and that is um, part of the resolution that we're going to be seeing at our next meeting shows a number of pieces that that I'm that are new one is we're getting a 560,000 reimbursement from the state and I didn't know what that's all about and then because that wasn't mentioned in, in the previous information. And then there's $1.8 million of our cost is for consulting fees for the transportation complex. So I have those two questions. And a third question, probably a bigger overwhelming question is, we currently have, I don't know how much space we currently have, and I'm ultimately just, I'm having a hard time explaining to, to taxpayers what, um, why we need a, such a much more expensive facility, basically about 10 times what we have now from a cost standpoint for the new complex. Many of you are aware that the, like the school district, Sheboygan School District, the town of Sheboygan also has uh, tax increases on our, the budget or the, um, on the ballot in November, um, 29 million for the Sheboygan Area School District, a $29 building, and, and there's quite a bit of work that went into that and um, providing information. So I really like some information to help me understand, to, to, to explain to taxpayers the gap between where we are now with the buildings we have. At, I don't know how many square feet we have, and we're going to 125,000. We've, and our buildings currently are under, they're, they're currently valued at about, I believe, 3,000. And then we're, we're going up to needing buildings in the amount of $24.9 million. So we're, the cost of our buildings is, is drastically increasing for the complex. So those are the three questions that I'm hoping I can get some substance for to, to explain to people w why we're putting this, the complex, with that uh, level of costs. Yes, Adam, go ahead. Good questions. At the county board leadership forum, that was the first time we presented all the information to the county board, and I don't believe you were able to attend that, but that was the first time in June. 
Subsequent to that, we've had trans uh, discussions at the Transportation Committee, the Executive Committee, and Finance Committee. So clearly this has been a transparent process. Uh, I know that Greg has compared and contrasted our current square footage with the new building. The new building will be larger. Though when we've compared and contrasted that with other counties that have built a new transportation complex, actually the square footage increases less than what we've seen in some surrounding buildings. So I think the Transportation Committee in particular, but certainly I want to give credit where credit's due, Greg Wagaman and the Finance Committee, there has been some real focus on how large is this going to be and why, how does it compare to other new facilities that have been built and why. And I think that we've taken a a frugal, thoughtful approach on it. I don't have the numbers committed to memory, so Greg, if the chair is so inclined, could get into those specifics. But bottom line is, we're taking the highway facility in the city of Sheboygan that is a very aged building, the Plymouth facility, and the Elkhart facility, Selling those three facilities for a higher and better use that should contribute to economic development in the community and consolidating all those functions into one new facility that should be an investment for the next 75 years or more. Uh, is there a significant cost? Yes, there is. But from a standpoint of long-term investment, efficiencies, and continuing to maintain our transportation system and how important it is to economic development, I certainly don't have any problem looking a taxpayer in the eye and saying this is a good investment for our community. The other thing that we've done is not only have we had a number of discussions on this, but the horse is out of the barn. We've purchased the property at the approval of the county board and we've already done the um, architectural work with the approval of the county board We've selected who's going to do the work with the approval of the county board, and we're going to be breaking ground this fall. I don't know specifically when. Again, Greg would know that better than I, at the approval of the county board. So I think wheels are in motion, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Thank you, Adam. Greg, did you have anything you wanted to add? The uh, $560,000 is uh, reimbursement from the state for the salt shed that is included. The $1.8 million is for consultant fees for the design of the facility, as well as earth moving that's going to be happening as well as having an NPA. Okay, Supervisor Hoffman, did you have a comment or a response you want to make? No, it, this is on the airport, so if, oh. if you're, you know, if okay. you're done Can with I the wait others, on you then? Is that I'll, fair? I'll, I'll, I'll wait. You know, okay. if you're done with the rest, I'll wait. Is that fair? Night. What's that? Is that fair if you want to you know, hold, hold I'll your... I'll wait. That's okay. Okay. Uh, Supervisor Bemis? Of the three facilities that we're replacing, the newest facility is the Plymouth facility. And that's actually too small for the larger trucks that we're now using. Thank you, Supervisor Bemis. And Supervisor Van Dixorn? I think one thing we do forget is the efficiency of it. I mean, this is going to be a big step forward for our highway commissioner that these more more efficient and the people will be around the highway commissioner more. And I the thing is I think we have three foremans for the three ships and we'll have one now. So it's the efficiency is the big thing. Supervisor Rayner, you had a follow up or comment? Oh yes, thank you, Chairman Wagner. So I, I Thanks. I have to be honest with you, I, have, I haven't heard any really good solid information. In, in a business situation, we use a white paper to justify you know, where we're going from 1 million in, one, in this case we're going from 2.1 million in assets to a building that's going to cost us 2 point, or 24.9 million dollars. So we're going 10 times the size. and. I can look people in the eye and say it's a good thing. I can say the horse is out of the barn. I can say there's efficiencies. However, you know, we're going 10 times the size and I know we need to grow so I could justify part of that. And obviously when you build something new, it's going to cost more than your old building. But again, we're going with a 10 times the cost of what we have now. And other than 
we're going to have efficiencies. That's great. Is that going to be a million a year that we are going to have a reduction in operating expenses? Or are we also just going to be growing the, the highway department and adding more staff? And there's so many questions that I um, really don't understand how to explain where we're at now to where we're going to be because I, I don't have that any documentation. I've Correct. been to some meetings where they have had presentations. Um, there was a presentation at the Finance Committee with the architectural presentation. Um, but we're, we're putting eight, according to the capital plan, $8.08 million of other funds into, into this um, complex. And that's, that's taxpayers' money. So I'm really um, wondering if there is a document or a white paper or something that kind of lays out those efficiencies, that lays out you know, why we are spending 10 times more than what we have now for, for, for a building. Thank you. Supervisor Epping. Thank you, Chairman Wigner. As uh, Supervisor Uraner says, this is not like it is in her in the businesses that she, that she deals with basically but like businesses that supervisor Uraner would deal with you need advancement you need update you need new technology this is all happening whether it be a new building whether it has to do with the the uh, equipment that that the tra that the highway department is going to be getting the everything is new uh, my, my son Went went to a uh, UTI out in in Phoenix to to learn new technology on automotive mechanics and and, and technician work. Everything is get is updating itself year by year by year. And unless we catch up, we're going to fall behind, and it's going to cost us money. I think the investment that we make will be an investment in the future and something that we have to do. Otherwise, we're going to fall behind just like we're falling behind, like we have fallen behind on other projects in the, in the past. And we learned our lesson by saying, don't fall behind, keep up, keep ahead. So this is why we're doing this. If the question is why we're doing it, that is why. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Epping. Uh, Greg, did you have anything else you wanted to add and help? I guess you know, we, we, we did put the presentation on at the Finance Committee. Back in 2008, 2009, we did have a study that was performed uh, analyze our department. Uh, at that point, they suggested that we go down to four facilities, or three facilities, I'm sorry. Uh, this is our compromise. It puts us in four different corners of the, of the county uh, with consolidation, reducing our footprint. Uh, I think it has a lot of benefits for the future. Uh, I did indicate some of the utility costs at that finance meeting that we've saved over the, uh, over the years. Uh, so those, those numbers were presented. Thank you, Greg. Okay, I, I didn't forget you, Supervisor Hoffman. Well, I'll wait for Mr. Bemis. Me, Mr. Bemis is probably yeah, okay. Uh, Supervisor Bemis, I'm sorry, go ahead. I think one of the things that's involved here, too, is the price of uh, the buildings now compared to what it used to be. I go back when you could buy a brand new car for 500 bucks. That same car today costs 30. Thank you, Supervisor Bemis. Uh, Supervisor Otten, on this topic, you want to talk? Yes. Thank ahead. you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Uh, do we have any idea what these three vacated properties are going to bring? Adam, we, we sold one. Yes, Supervisor Otten, uh, the appraised value for the Elkhart Lake Shed was 480 and we sold it for 500000 or 510 the Plymouth Shed is appraised at 570, and the main highway headquarters is 1.1, 1.1 million. Those are the appraised values. Appraised values. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else on that topic? Okay, Supervisor Hoffman, Airport. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I haven't been around quite as long as Supervisor Bemis, but I've been around a while. Okay especially out at the airport. I've been flying out there, I've been hanging on, hang, pardon me, I got a plate in now, uh, 
I got a tooth that I could pull it out and show you. But anyway, that's a dental problem. That's okay. Go ahead. So I, I have a little trouble speaking. Uh, no, I haven't been drinking. All right. So anyway, uh, I haven't been around as long as Bemis, but I have been around at the airport almost going on 40 years. I've owned a hangar out there since 91. Okay. I have a couple of comments. Now, first of all, those of us on the general aviation side, we own our hangars and we have a lot invested in our aircraft, our, our, our equipment inside the hangars and so on and so forth. I see now where, according to this, it says that we are not going to have our, right here, uh, let's see if I can find it here, in the capital pro program here, our, our area and ramps uh, improved until 2020. Well, I flew today. It was a beautiful day. And I'm going to tell you, our, and I'm not placing blame anywhere, and I'm not after anybody's scalp, but I'm going to tell you, taxiing out from my hangar, going to the runway, was worse than driving on any road in Sheboygan County. They're terrible. And I'll invite you to come out, and I'll take you flying. I'll put you in my plane, and we'll taxi out. Why in the heck hasn't this been addressed sooner? Why are we waiting till 2020? We're the poor orphan, orphans over there, uh, 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 almost 40 of us over there. Now, this, this should be moved up sooner. I, I'm serious. I mean, the, the, there's loose gravel on, 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 the, on our, our taxiway going from our hangar out to the runway, and it's chewing up my prop. Now, if you want to know what my prop costs, it's well over $7,000 just for a prop. And it picks up when you start spinning, it just it grinds it down. That should be moved up, and I would like the Transportation Committee or whoever to look at that. Secondly, our airport, and I hate to say this, and I go all over the country. I was down in Florida at Lakin for a fly-in this April. I've been at EAA, and I talk with a lot of pilots. I, I go to flight instructor meetings. Uh, our airport is not growing. I hate to tell you that. It is not growing. There are some in Wisconsin that are. There are many that are maintaining their, where they're at, and some are losing ground. So I see here you have a million dollars slated for a terminal building. That's wishful thinking. I would respectfully suggest that you take it out of the budget. Take it out until such time as our airport starts to go. And I don't see it growing in the very near future, whether it's the economy, management, or whatever it is. I don't see it. And I go, you know, I must, I must get in about 30 different airports a year, at least, and at least 15 in the state. So that should come out of the budget, that $1 million. Now, once again, I'm not after anybody's scalp. I don't want anybody's job, but I'm just telling you what I see as a private pilot out there, and I'm very distressed as a member of this county board that we're not addressing some things that should be done out at the airport. And I'm not pointing fingers, but we better hop on the stick. If you want to see this airport grow, you know, if you want to see the attitude about this airport with pilots around the state grow, we got to do something. Thank you very much. Thank you, Supervisor Hoffman. Supervisor Bemis. Uh, the Transportation Committee will be taking a look at that area probably next month. Oh, not over the hangar, please. Please. Thank you, Supervisor Bemis. Supervisor Van Dixorn. I'll second that. We'll take a look at that, Brian. <clears throat> and there's a plan out there, and I think there's more things happening at that airport than you realize, Brian. Things are happening. Thank you, Supervisor Van Dixorn. <laughs> Supervisor Uraner. I'd like to make a motion that we postpone the, the approval of the capital plan until our next meeting in October. Could you repeat that motion? Yes. The motion is that we po postpone approving the capital plan until our October meeting. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? Supervisor Baumgart. I'll second that. Thank you, Supervisor Baumgart. This is, this is contrary to a 
Okay, you want to say that? I, Carl's going to make a comment here under my. Uh, our code requires that we take action in the month of uh, September, so therefore uh, to postpone would require a two-thirds vote because you're, you're uh, seeking to suspend the rules to do this. Thank you, Carl. Is this a debatable uh, discussion? I believe it is. Okay. Supervisor Epping, then. Thank you, Chairman Wagner. I guess my question is, for what reason are we going to uh, uh, postpone it, and what do we hope to accomplish by that? And I guess I'd have to direct that to Supervisor Uraner, who made the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Epping. Do you want to respond, Supervisor Uraner? Okay. Supervisor Hoffman. Yeah, uh, I'm, I, I agree we, we shouldn't postpone it, but I would tell you that I know that once it's adopted, we can still move things around. Yes. So that, that's why I'm going to vote for this. Yeah. And uh, you know, once again, I don't want anybody's scalp, but, yeah. you know, I, I have some serious concerns. And I, I'm out there every day just about, and I, I've seen it for over 30 years, so don't ignore what I'm saying. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Hoffman. Okay. All right, Supervisor Rayner. I think the point is moot to postpone it if we can't, according to our ordinances. So, um, or we can with a two-thirds vote. I'm sorry. So. Yeah. We. Okay. Got it. I. Okay. So. Are you, are you withdrawing the motion, or are you keeping it out there? I, I'll, I can withdraw the motion. Okay. Is that okay with the second? Okay. The motion's withdrawn. If there's no uh, opposition, okay, Carl. Yeah. No opposition. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, then we're voting on resolution. You need a minute? Well, I gotta put it You gotta undo the motion. Do, 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 no, no. We'll just wait a minute. No, that was withdrawn, Supervisor Bemis. Now we're simply gonna vote uh, to approve or not approve resolution number 15. Okay. Okay. Everybody clear on what we're voting on? Resolution number 15 to adopt it. Yeah. Those, we get, we set? Yep. Okay. All those in favor of adopting, vote yes. Those opposed, no. Motion is approved 23 I, 3 nay. Thank you. Resolution number 16. Regarding supporting drug treatment court for Sheboygan County, committee recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for adoption. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Uraner. I second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Uraner. A question or con no. Any discussion? If not, no discussion. All those in favor, vote aye. Those opposed, nay. That motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Ordinance number five. Regarding updating portion of peace and good order ordinance, committee recommendation to enact. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for adoption of ordinance number five. Thank you. Supervisor Uraner. I second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Uraner. Any discussion? Hearing, seeing no lights, all those in favor, vote aye. Those opposed, nay. That motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Ordinance number six. Regarding repealing and recreating Chapter 72 Shoreland Ordinance, committee recommendation to amend for the committee report and an act as amended. Supervisor Damp. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to adopt Ordinance uh, six. Thank you, Supervisor Damp. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Any questions or comments? Supervisor Baumgart. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have a couple. Um, I understand uh, we're supposed to be repealing and recreating Chapter 72 Shoreline Ordinance for Sheboygan County, as all 72 counties have to do this. Um, Mr. Chairman and members of the County Board, uh, the public needs to know and understand that we are required by a state mandate to change Boynton County shoreline protection. 
Let me explain how this change in the law came about. Most of you should know, but not be pleased on how it happened. In the dead of night, this is not very good democracy, when the Wisconsin Joint Finance Committee was working on the state budget, an amendment to the budget was added. No public hearings, none whatsoever. This is what we're going to be voting on. on um, little to no discussion, a power play that weakened local control and weakened Wisconsin protection on its shoreline uh, lands. And it took power away from local government, our power, your power as county board supervisors, and every seven, uh, every county in, in the state of Wisconsin who used to have a little place so they could work with their uh, own shoreline uh, zoning because not every county is the same. Lake Michigan is different than the Horicon Marsh zoning. Um, the Dodge County is different than um, uh, Kenosha County. And if you go around the state, the thing that was put in the budget required that everybody follow the basic model. Crazy. The public should know this was stuck in the middle of the night in a budget and in a process called democracy. Anyway, in the days that followed, the budget amendment, the county land and water departments, which uh, I'm on the prey committee in, in the county and we weren't quite very happy about the process. Wisconsin Counties Association, lake associations around the state of Wisconsin, many of them, and throughout Wisconsin became aware and concerned, wrote letters and resolutions. We had some. We wrote uh, and met with legislators who gave us a cold shoulder. They knew that it, there was a loss of local control and a loss of shoreline protection. Many newspapers wrote editorials. Conservation groups became concerned at the end. The Joint Finance Committee and, and the legislature made some very, very modest changes and said, there, we helped you out. Good job. Anyway, the temptation would be to say it was done by a political power, uh, a party that claims best government is local government. That's us. Obviously, the temptation would be, say, would be to say they screwed us. But I don't care which political party does it, in the dead of night, it was not right, it was a raw deal, and the people of this county and every county in the state of Wisconsin has to suck it up tonight, and I'm not going to vote for this. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Baumgart. Supervisor Bemis. Well, at least they were working in the middle of the night, and they didn't end up down in Illinois. Thank you, Supervisor Bemis. <laughs> Any other discussion? Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor, vote aye. Those opposed, nay. Nineteen eyes, four nays. Thank you. <coughs> Consideration of committee reports, finance committee, resolution number 17. Regarding approving land swap at Amsterdam Dunes, committee recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Wegeman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll vote for adoption of resolution number 17. Thank you, Supervisor Wegeman. Supervisor Testrudi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll second the motion. Thank you, Supervisor Testrudi. Any discussion? All those in favor, vote aye. Those opposed, nay. Two, seven. And go check. Ed. All right. Motions approved unanimously. Thank you. Turn the gavel over to the Vice Chairman Marthenzi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Resolutions introduced. Resolution number 18 from the Executive Committee. Regarding authorizing county to lend Bay Lake Regional Planning Commission 
Just over $72,000 to refinance pension liability. Resolution number 18 is referred to the Finance Committee. Resolution number 19 from the Executive Committee. Regarding approving standard intergovernmental agreement for county sales tax revenue sharing. Resolution number 19 is referred to the Finance Committee. Supervisor Baumgart. Uh, just uh, curious, we skipped over resolution 17. Was there a reason for that? No, it was voted on. No, we voted on that, Jim. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's why. Okay. Sorry. Continuing on, resolution number 20 from the Planning Resources Ag and Extension Committee. Regarding acceptance of dedicated donation for Amsterdam Dunes. Resolution number 20 is referred to the Finance Committee. Resolution number 21 from the Planning Resources Ag and Extension Committee. Regarding approving revisions to farmland preservation plan. Resolution number 21 is referred to the Executive Committee. Resolution number 22 from the Planning Resources Ag and Extension Committee. Regarding authorizing Sheboygan County Planning and Conservation Department to apply for county conservation aids. Resolution number 22 is referred to the Finance Committee. He just wants the Okay, continuing on. Resolution number 23 from the Transportation Committee. Regarding authorizing relocation of highway offices and facilities. Resolution number 23 is referred to the Executive Committee. Resolution number 24 from the Transportation Committee. Regarding supporting the Just Fix It program for statewide road maintenance. Resolution number 24 is referred to the Executive Committee. Resolution number 25 from the Transportation Committee. Regarding authorizing county aid for bridge culvert construction in the town of Wilson. Resolution number 25 is referred to the Finance Committee. Ordinances to be introduced. There, there are, are none. none. And a motion is in order to adjourn. Supervisor Bemis. I move we adjourn. Supervisor Winkle, motion is to adjourn. Second. Motion is seconded. All in favor of adjourning, press your I button. Those opposed, press your nay button. <laughs> Supervisor, Supervisor Wegeman. Push your eye button. Thank you. There, we are adjourned. County board is adjourned. <laughs>